Last night I sat down with a small piece of rope, um, said I was going to learn how to tie a few knots. Um, most of my mountaineering um, to date has been without ropes and harnesses and stuff like that. Uh, it's just been, you know, ice axe and crampons and just, just booting up, but um, I think in order to get in some more technical terrain, uh, ropes and knots are going to be more imperative. So last night I sat down, small piece of rope similar to this, and um, had a list, a couple knots that I uh, that I wanted to learn. I wrote down a few weeks ago and uh, said I'm gonna I'm gonna learn at least one of these knots tonight. First one on the list uh, was a bowline or bowline knot, however you want to say it. And I said, you know, what, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn how to tie that knot. And I uh, sat down for a few minutes and tried to put it together. And you know, didn't quite, couldn't quite get it. Couldn't quite get it. Um, and I'd sat down once before, um, sitting in the airport, flying, flying back to Colorado. Um, not in a great mood, I was a little hungry. Uh, my girlfriend at the time and I were kind of arguing about some stuff and uh, the knot just wasn't clicking. I was fucking trying everything and it just, I couldn't get it to work. I just couldn't figure it out. So I threw it in the bag and said to hell with it and went and got something to eat and tried to clear my head. But last night I revisited it and um, I didn't get it right away at first either. It took me a few times and uh, that, it, was, it was frustrating first and I definitely thought about giving up and I was reminded about the time I got frustrated in the airport and kind of those feelings uh, that are were associated with with that uh, particular moment and it didn't feel great but you know I, I sat there and said you know screw it man like I need this you you're more than capable of learning how to do this knot you're more than capable of learning this little bitty skill so I sat there and you know like 10 15 minutes went by and I was like okay all right and then I then it clicked and then I tied it once and I I left it there I said all right cool I'm going to I'm going to work on the I'm going to practice on this end and I want to leave this here on this end to remind me that that I am capable of doing it so I did the same thing you know put it a little loop here went under around the tree back through and then bam but you know, like didn't quite click at first either. So I'm like, okay, looking at the knot, looking at this. All right, all right what did I do the first time? Here we go. And then around, went back through. Okay, oh shit, I think I got it. And then bam, and then bam, another knot. Got two bow lines on each side. So, and I went, and I continued to do this uh, throughout the night, probably for an hour or so, tying it. I don't know, 50 to 60 times just kind of ingraining that in my head and then I kind of went on to to figure eight and, 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 and try to figure that one out. But that's the point is not to show you that I can tie a knot. The feeling I got when I tied it for the first time was, was, was a good feeling. You know, I felt accomplished. Despite how small of a task this, this was, this is, um, it felt good. And it didn't feel good because now I have the capability of tying a bowling knot. Um, it felt good because this is but a small step to a much larger goal, a much, a much greater goal. But to get to that goal, you have to do the small stuff. You have to learn, learn the 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 ins and outs of things that requ that are required of you to get to that higher goal um, and specifically this knot here um, is going to be imperative to big mountain climbing it's one of the most important knots uh, in mountaineering this and the figure eight um, and a lot of fishermen use this and this is what the knot they'll use to like anchor their boat to the dock and stuff not anchor but rope their boats to the docks so and then float away. Um, and, and, and it got me thinking about success and uh, and failure a lot last night. I've been kind of going through, uh, not 
not a rough time, but a difficult time. Um, saying goodbye to some things and uh, you know s discovering you know more about myself and, and things like that and that's never an easy process and it's never an easy process when it's kind of forced on you in the way that sometimes life uh, has of doing that um, but it got me thinking about success and failure quite a bit and to, to me how how much joy this little knot brought me it just really opened opened my eyes to how little we can actually you know break off and, and accomplish today that will not only give us a, a little immediate satisfaction in the moment because we've achieved something but also a, a greater satisfaction knowing that we have achieved something that's going to propel us um, into the future and and, and and perhaps maybe even um, get us closer to that ultimate goal that where we want to be um, so for me this knot here was was a stepping stone and this knot is going to be incredibly important for me moving forward just like you today there's a task probably as little and as as meaningful as something like this bowling knot that you can accomplish today and it's, I'm not going to say that I'm going to think about this knot every time I tie it if, when I'm on a high peak or whatnot, but the fact that I took the time aside to do such a small thing and I devoted specific amount, uh, a, a specific time to, to accomplish this, um, this little thing is going to pay off dividends. And um, that's how success is, is achieved. It's little steps like this. It's it's how you climb a mountain. You climb it one step at a time, one move at a time. It's how we do life. One day at a time, one minute, one moment at a time. And things don't always go uh, the way we'd like them to. I wish I could have tied this, you know, in one uh, one try, one failed swoop. I wish I didn't have that negative uh, memory uh, sitting in the airport fucking around with this thing, you know? But I don't know if I'd have necessarily enjoyed uh, actually doing it as much if I hadn't had had those things. So that's it. Just it just spoke to me a lot how little we can do on a daily basis and, and have some sort of of achievement. You know, I um, I wrote did some journaling last night too and. There was a note I wanted to include in this video. Hopefully we can find it. I underlined it, but... Ah, here we go. And this is uh, kind of the catalyst behind this video here is, you know, the metaphor of the knot is all great and all, and it's definitely a good metaphor for success and failure and how we learn through our failures and learn through things like that and um, you know it's been a while since I've sat in front of a camera and, and video blogged like this and you know I've I'm a man of conviction and that's about the best word I could describe it is conviction I have this conviction in my mind and in my head that I've been fucking running from for years now probably since when I left LA that uh, you know, I kind of, I don't know, when I left LA, I was, I don't know, I was a little bit lost. I was like, you know, everything up until that point in my life was geared toward getting me to LA. And once I got out there and was successful, I, I didn't have the fulfillment that I necessarily thought I should have. Um, after all that hard work and all that sweat that I put into achieving things out there and uh, it just didn't so I felt bad about that I felt like it was um, a failure on my part that that, that shouldn't have felt, had so I shouldn't have felt bad about doing that um, I went out there I tried it and you know it just wasn't for me it's not like I wasn't up and coming wasn't I was uh, so like what I journaled about was I need to break my silence. Been running from what I'm supposed to be doing—that's sharing, uh, 
uh, my mindset with you guys that's sharing stories and, 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 and metaphors and stupid shit like this uh, because I've seen enough feedback from hundreds of people at this point that that reconfirmed to me that I have something that needs to come out. The world needs to know more about who I am and how I see the world and I think there's tremendous value in that and I've run from that because I'm not an egotistical guy. I'm a pretty humble guy. I don't think I don't think I'm anything special when anybody comes up and says, "Man, like I uh I uh, I kind of live vicariously through you and your life." And I'm like, "Man, I don't know how to respond to that. I don't know what I, I, I take it as a compliment, a compliment because it is, I know what they mean by that. I know they mean that they enjoy seeing my adventures and in my life and things like that. And I do too. Um, but it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to take a step outside of my life and look at it from a third, pers uh, third person perspective uh, that way. Because at my everyday life, I wouldn't think it's any glamorous than anybody else's. You know, like last night I sat around tying knots for, for an hour and then journaling and then listening to some music and looking up songs to learn on the harmonica and shit like that. I, uh, I'm learning, trying to learn how to play the harmonica, trying to keep myself, uh, busy. That's part of, like, part of what I'm getting at too is that running from these things is I've, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten a little lazy when it comes to, to, uh, to doing what I'm supposed to be doing. There's videos that I uh, that are in the back of my mind that are just on replay in my head that I need to get out there and create. There's books in my head that I've, I'm writing on a daily basis that I need to get out and write. And I, uh, I'm just not doing it to the capacity that I, I need to, you know? And I, I'm trying to give myself grace. I'm trying to give myself some some space and some and some freedom and not put so much pressure on myself. But I think I, I've teetered too far to the to the lazy side of that, and I need to kind of go back towards the more motivated side, and and that's where I'm, um, that's what I'm trying to get to to now, is that more motivated that that uh, that Nick who's who's high on life and who's who looks at the positive of every situation, and uh, and just like strives to to live a life that I can be proud of. You know, that's all I've ever wanted. That's, you know, the biggest thing of me moving to LA was like, I think my life, the life that I want is out there. Turns out it wasn't no big deal. Came to Colorado, okay, starting to figure some shit out now. I like this area, I like snowboarding, I like this, I like that. And the last few years have been have been really great on, on the surface level. And even in the inside, even interior, um, uh, I've done a lot of mental work and I've done a lot of, uh, self work on, on, on myself and kind of who I am, what I want to become, who the world needs me to be, who my friends need me to be, who my family needs me to be. And um, I think maybe I put a lot of pressure on myself to to become something um, maybe that I'm not destined to be or just, just to, to, to provide things for people that maybe I'm not capable of doing um, and things like that. But like you know, like I need to break my silence, and that's what I'm doing with this video blog. It's like I've seen too many, uh, too many affirmations saying that I need to need to do this. I need to get this stuff out. There's so many stories in my head that if it helps one person, then then great, you know. And I I hesitate. It's it's like a constant struggle with me because sharing. Uh, in a way, nowadays, especially with social media the way it is, it's, it's, it's become more of a brag. It's like, oh, check out my awesome life. It's this, it's that. Uh, everybody should, you know, praise me for this awesome life. And I just really don't want to do that. My stuff has, has always been teachable moments um, and, it, and like inspiring adventure, right? We only got one chance at life. We only got one of these uh, lives to, to live. And I've just been super passionate um, pretty much my entire adult life about living a life I can be proud of and for me like I just need to convince myself that sharing my life um, in some capacity isn't necessarily bragging it's 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 I want it to be motivational I want it to be something that somebody can look at and say if he can do it then then I can too 
because I've never been the biggest, the strongest, the fastest. I grew up playing football, I played in college. Um, very blessed to be able to play uh, the game for eight years. Um, that's you know twice as long as most people most people get, and I'm, I'm super privileged for that. But I worked my ass off to be able to have those opportunities, and I'm still that relentless guy who's working his ass off for for different opportunities for um, um, to, to always better better myself you know and one thing you know I'm not I've said I'm not the biggest strongest or fastest but one thing I think what stands out about me is 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 my mindset and that's allowed me to live a life that's been much different from most other people and there's probably a lot of people or a few people out there that would like to live a similar lifestyle they just they don't have the the courage or the desire or they don't want it bad enough to go out there and do it. I don't know what it is but and it's and, and I'm not saying my lifestyle is any better than anybody else's it's not my I you know we all have uh, things in life that we suffer uh, for you know um, I'm, I've been big on stoicism the last couple of years and I've talked about it a little bit before but you know stoicism is in my mind it's it's a uh, it's a practice of suffering right so in life life is I don't know if there's a secret to life or anything. I don't necessarily believe in that kind of shit. But <clears throat> what I do believe is we all need kind of a framework to kind of figure things out and and kind of like put a put some kind of perspective on this crazy thing we call it life, right? Like what is it about? Like I don't know if it necessarily has to have meaning for it to be enjoyable. Like I don't know if we should chase joy or should delay grat gratification or whatnot. But stoicism for me has been a way to to um, to to handle suffering, right? Life, in in many ways, is just how we handle suffering. How joy for us is how we how we uh, handle suffering. We all suffer, right? I am a single guy. I I'm on the road a lot. I travel a lot. I go back and forth, Colorado, Alaska, been all over the West. Lived in eight states already. Not even thirty years old. Uh, done a lot of cool things, right? If you if if this is your first video you're seeing of me, just go back through Instagram or something and just kind of get an idea of, of the guy you're, you're dealing with here. But, um, so, like, all those are great, right? Pros. I'm not really tied down to any one location. I don't have many possessions, so I'm, I'm flexible. I can move and go as I please just about. Um, I, I know people literally all over the country, so I have contacts. I can always find work. And uh, I've been very thankful for to do so. But on the cons, uh, on the on the suffering side of that is, you know, it gets lonely quite a bit. Uh, I'm by myself a lot. Uh, I've driven, I don't even know, probably around 400,000 miles, maybe. That sound, I don't think that's too far fetched. Maybe a little bit more, 400,000 miles. Majority of those by myself. In uh, Canada by myself, all over the West by myself, countless road trips east to west. Um, I did a California to Tennessee road trip uh, back in the day, uh, Alaska to North Carolina, like big road trips, okay? Like my idea, like if you tell me, oh, we've got a six hour road trip, I'm, oh, that's not too bad. That's like a fucking Sunday drive for me. Um, but nonetheless, suffering is, you know, like uh, I got a bunch of people, I know a ton of people, but yet I'm, I'm lonely quite often. And that's fine. Like, I've always been a person that can deal, uh, can be by myself a lot. I'm recording this video by myself. I mean, by my, being by myself isn't, isn't a huge issue. Um, but when I struggle, I think I do tend to kind of go back into myself even more. And I should, I should uh, lean on friends and family and things like that when, when I do struggle. Uh, I just, I just don't wish, I just don't want to be a burden on anybody. That's kind of my biggest fear is, is being a burden. On, on somebody and that's something that I just I just never want to do I want to be as self-reliant as possible but I do I'm not naive enough to think that I can get through this life uh, all by my lonesome and I don't want to being by yourself isn't isn't fun isn't always fun um, I've had fun doing it because I've realized it's so much harder to get to, to convince people to go out and do things with you when I moved out to LA I I tried to get a bunch of guys that were in similar situations go out there let's go let's go figure some stuff out you know and uh, nobody did, but I, so I didn't let that hold me back, and I'm never gonna let not having somebody go out and do something with me hold me back. I think if you can learn how 
to do things, enjoy things on your own. Uh, that that not necessarily a secret of life, but I think that's a big uh, big proponent of what's what's capable, what's possible out there for you if if you're willing to go out and do and not have to have people with you and still enjoy it. Then that's that's a great asset. So I would say strive towards that. But let me rewind back to the suffering. So for the people who are in relationships, married, kids, all that good stuff, they got houses and families. They may be not very lonely. They may have friends that they see on a daily basis. They see their families every day. They get to kiss their kids and go and, and tuck them in at night and stuff. But they don't have the freedom that I have. They suffer from you know being in that set location and kind of falling into a routine and, and doing this and doing that. And you know they see what I'm doing and they're like, oh man, that would be sweet. I wish I had the freedom and the space to do that. And I look at them and I'm like, man, I fucking love and family, kids, all that good stuff. Like, damn, I kind of. You know, I kind of, I, I kind of think I want that, you know, but so in life, we choose what we uh, suffer for, you know, in a lot of ways, and choosing the right things to suffer for, I think, is incredibly imperative, and that's kind of a negative, half, half empty way to look at it. You can look at the other side, like we can choose what we want to enjoy, right? So we have the suffering and the enjoyment, like okay, I can't do that. So like instead of like worrying about suffering because I don't get to do this over here, I want to focus on enjoying this uh, that I do have and that I do get to do on a daily basis and I get to enjoy that. So I want to focus on the enjoyment and not the negative negativity of the suffering. And it kind of ties back into to the knot yesterday. I uh, this little bit of joy I got from this <laughs> little two second knot. Um, reminded me of the mindset shift that that I needed right now and that I'm sure a lot of people out there probably do how quickly and how how much more likely we are to let the one or two negative things in our life just completely bog us down right like if I were to take a pen and paper and write <clears throat> everything down good things going on bad things going on the good things would far outweigh the bad things for sure that may not be the case for you but it is for me and I for whatever reason this little knot reminded me of that it's like all right dude you got some shit going on that's bad but it ain't all bad man it ain't all bad you've got a great life you live in a great place winter's just around the corner you about to get to get to go out and do what you love this knot right here is a symbol of what you are striving to become. I'm looking to become uh, as proficient in the mountains as possible. I want to go climb big peaks on a snowboard down them, and that's what I've dedicated a huge chunk of my life to. And the knot here signifies a very, very tiny step, but an important step nonetheless toward that ultimate goal toward getting into the mountains, climbing them safely, descending them safely, and potentially sharing that with others. That's what this bowline knot reminded me of yesterday. And I hope that this video can somehow, some way, work as a metaphor for you and your life and that you focus on the good and you appreciate the good. Don't let the two or three negative things in your life overshadow all the blessings that our Creator has bestowed upon you. We live in a great country. It's a little bit in turmoil right now, but great country nonetheless. We get to go out, do the things we want to do with the people that we want to do them with. And that's a huge blessing in and of itself. And if you have a couple friends, which I do, I've gotten many friends, those are tremendous blessings in and of themselves. And the struggles that we're going through right now, let's reframe our mindset and not view them as merely struggles, but as lessons to learn from, things to grow from, and in turn, they'll make us better better humans, better able to love and serve others, and uh, enjoy this one shot at life that we have.
Thanks for watching, guys.